With one Google search on heat protectants, you'll be hit with a barrage of hundreds of brands and nice looking bottles labeled heat protectant, thermal shield, heat guard, heat defense, and a whole bunch of other catchy phrases. When using a blow dryer, the use of a heat protectant is very important, but you're almost made to feel like these products are the only way to protect your hair from heat. So in this video, I'm gonna clear up some confusion around this and give you a different perspective in hopes that you become a smarter consumer. A heat protectant's job is simple. It reduces your chances of experiencing heat damage when applying direct heat to your hair. A good heat protectant will do this in three ways. First, the obvious way which is to create a protective coat on the surface of each hair strand that acts as a barrier between your beloved hair and the heat source. A good heat protectant should also have relatively high thermal conductivity. I'll explain what I mean by that later. And another way that many of us don't consider is that a good heat protectant should also be able to counter the drying effects of heat and keep your hair from drying out. No, not really. You can achieve heat protection from blow dryers with stuff you probably already have around your house. Let's start with alternative options of things that create a protective coat on the surface of your hair. The first thing that comes to mind are oils. And not just coating oils, penetrating oils work well too. Fun fact! With natural hair, oils are really not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. A slight difference in just hair porosities can completely affect how the same oil feels, penetrates, and coats the hair. For example, low porosity hair types will absorb a smaller amount of coconut oil with the rest left to coat the surface, while higher porosity hair types will absorb a larger amount of coconut oil with little left on the surface. So especially with oils, it's really important to use trial and error to find your staples and quantities. Overall, oils do a great job of providing a protective barrier between your hair and the heat source. If your hair is moisturized, they spread on easily. And for the most part, if you're using a blow dryer correctly, the heat will never reach anywhere near most oils smoke or burning point. So it'll hold up. Thermal conductivity is a measure of how fast it takes for, in this case, heat to spread in oil, or how fast it takes for oil to heat up. And heat capacity is a measure of how much heat it takes to raise the temperature of the oil by one degree. The thermal conductivity of oils, for the most part, is fast and even. So when using a blow dryer, the oil coating your hair will heat up fast reducing the amount of heat you have to put on your hair. The coat of oil will also help heat distribute more evenly, so you're less likely to experience hot spots. And on the other hand, oils have a relatively low heat capacity, so not a lot of heat is needed to raise its temperature. And once the heat source is removed, it tends to cool down just as fast, so your hair won't remain hot for too long. A good heat protectant should also be able to offset the drying effects of blow dryers. In other words, keep the blow dryer from completely drying out your hair. The only way I know to do this is to add something to your hair that helps it attract and retain as much moisture as possible. Humectants like agave, glycerin, and honey, just to name a few, do a great job at this. Humectant molecules are very, very attracted to water molecules. So when you use a product with a humectant in it, it attracts water from the air into your hair and makes it really, really hard for your hair to completely dry out. If you use the right amount in the right way, it keeps your hair juicy and flexible even after it's been blown out. I'll show you exactly how I use it to stretch my hair in the next video. If you're not in the mood to make your own DIY humectant product, the good news is that humectants are in products you probably already have in your house. 
They have different strengths and require different quantities. So I'll talk about that and clear up some myths about humectants in a video soon. One last thing. I can't talk about heat protection without talking about protein. If you plan on using heat to stretch your hair, it's a smart idea to do a real protein treatment first. Proteins add an additional, thinner protective coat that equips your hair strands with even more defense against heat damage. And depending on what type of protein you use, it can also penetrate deeper into your hair strands and protect the inner layers from UV heat. Overall, if you plan on stretching your hair with a blow dryer, in order to effectively protect it from potential heat damage, you need an oil, humectant, and protein. In the next video, I'll show you exactly how I achieve that and step-by-step -step details on how I use heat to stretch my natural hair. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.